Okay, well, I could tell you one of two things. I could t tell you the standard sort of classical view uh, of what a vacuum is. Uh, but for me, that's not so interesting. I'd rather tell you the sort of non-standard quantum mechanical view of the vacuum. Because, we, you know, we typically we think of the vacuum as being sort of a quite a dull place with not much going on. Quantum mechanically, nothing could be further from the truth, essentially. The vacuum is an extremely lively place. Yeah, the vacuum's pretty straightforward, isn't it? It's where there's nothing there. There are no particles. Um, you, you can't breathe in a vacuum. You, many of us have seen the experiments where you, you take air out of, a, out of a, a, a jar and you see there's a flame and the flame gradually goes because first of all the oxygen is taken out. So you, you're, you're extracting something out from a body and eventually when there's nothing left, that's the vacuum until you go to the world of the quantum and it seems to just blow up in your face, this vacuum. The, the vacuum in quantum theory isn't quite like that. Indeed, the, in, in quantum theory, the vacuum doesn't have any uh, particles that you and I detect. That's, so that's common, that, that's still the same. But what it does have are these what you call virtual particles. These are particles which, because quantum mechanics works on the principle of uncertainty, these particles can pop up into existence and then disappear again over a very short period of time. I mean, the way I like to picture it is, if you've ever seen I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here, for example, these guys, they, they sort of have these they're sort of tubs of, full of eels and snakes all wriggling around, like, and they always have to get in it or something for a minute. Um, well, that sort of picture of all these eels and snakes wriggling around is actually how you would picture the vacuum quantum mechanically. It's that lively. So, so the reason it's so lively is, is, is what's happening is um, you get these particles and antiparticles, they literally pop into existence and then pop out of existence again. And this happens continuously at all points in space within that vacuum. So it's kind of like there's this continuous sort of hive of activity where particles are going in and out of the vacuum, popping into existence and then going out of existence again. And we, they, it's been tested. The, the idea that these particles are there has been tested. It, it was originally de devised by a number of eminent physicists, people like Paul Dirac and Richard Feynman. Uh, Schwinger had the idea that there, there were these things that could pop up into the vacuum. So you have you start off, if you like, with nothing, and then you think of it as there's no particles there, and then these things are popping up and disappearing again. It gives the, the vacuum an energy. And we know it gives the vacuum an energy. We've actually tested this experimentally. There's something known as the Casimir effect, where you take two parallel plates in a vacuum very close together. If you think classically, nothing should happen. But quantum mechanically, because of this vacuum energy, and this vacuum energy is sort of affected by how far apart these plates are, that gives you a force between the plates. And actually, it's been observed that the plates actually move together. So we actually really, you know, we've experimentally tested this vacuum energy as a real thing. And it's a, very, it's a way in which we do characterise the vacuum now, that it has this energy, this inherent energy that's there. And that our universe has a vacuum energy. If what I think is a vacuum is in fact this seething mass of particles popping into and out of existence, why does a vacuum behave like a vacuum? Why does a jar crumple when I suck all the particles out of it? Why aren't these virtual particles still striking the inside of the vessel and keeping the vessel inflated and things like that? The virtual particles that are present don't produce forces that are strong enough to, to, to overcome those kind of pre pressures that you're talking about. They are there. They're, they're all around us. I mean, if, if the world of quantum electrodynamics is correct and our understanding of the quantum world is correct, everywhere around us there are virtual particles being created and annihilated all the time. And in fact, some people actually believe that the, it's the presence of, these, of this force, this kind of casimir as an energy you can associate with it, like a casimir energy it's called. Some people believe that that is accounting for the expansion of the whole universe. It's called the cosmological constant. And so it's having a huge effect on large scales, but on small scales it turns out the actual contribution of these in any small region is actually relatively small. And so it's not big enough to affect the kind of process that you've just, just been describing. So if you took everything out of the universe, everything you thought you saw, all the planets, all the stars, all the dark matter, there's still something left over and that's the vacuum energy. And one of the great mysteries of physics is that the vacuum energy that we see, out, that, we, that, we, that we think is out there, is only very, very small. The density is very low. Theoretically, we expect the density to be very high and we really don't understand why it's like that.
can you create a super vacuum where even virtual particles don't exist? That's a, that would be a super duper vacuum, not just a super vacuum. Um, I'm not a, I don't think so because uh, any process, um, quantum, quantum mechanics can occur at any, on any scale at any time at any temperature. Quantum fluctuations can occur. There's, it, it, there's nothing to stop them. And so because they can occur, they will occur over some time period. Something will occur. And so you will get these fluctuations popping up. I'm not, I'm not aware of any situation where I can actually suppress the fluctuations themselves.